along with their little daughter Annie, Annie Christine. And while you're coming forward, I just have to say what an honor this is. I did your wedding, what, three weeks ago? <laughs> <laughs> two years. It's two, year, two years, yeah. And it was an interesting wedding out in the trees out somewhere. In Howard City. Howard City, yes. And, uh, but what's cool is that your parents have been here forever. Your dad's the voice and the guitar. And uh, she's going to sing like that too. She already does. She already does. <laughs> and your mom was raised in this church. And your grandmother mm -hmm. is sitting right there. Hi, Artie. I have to embarrass you just a little bit. All right. But uh, it's a cool thing to have fourth generation. So it's an honor for me to do this. Um, we are going to ask you some questions, which they are aware of, and then we will proceed to the baptism. And Lori is an ordained elder. This is Grandma Lori. This is Nick's mom. She's going to represent the consistory today and hold on to the water. All right, so the questions. I always get a lump in my throat every time I do a baptism. I've been doing them for 40 years. Mm -hmm. So if I start, you know, if I get a little weird, it's, you know. First question, do you admit that you are a sinner and need of salvation? If so, say I do. I do. And the second one, do you trust Jesus to save you? I do. And the third one, are you willing to follow the teachings of Jesus to the best of your ability? If so, say I am. I am. And the fourth one, are you willing to be loyal and active members of Lake and Bethel? If so, say I am. I am. And do you promise to instruct this child in the truth of God's word, in the way of salvation through Jesus Christ, to pray for her, to teach her to pray, and to train her in Christ's way by your example through worship and in the nurture of the church? If so, say I do. I do. And now for you, the congregation, you promise to give these parents and this child your prayerful support in their quest to raise this child in the knowledge and love of the Lord Jesus Christ. If so, say, we do. We do. And do you welcome this child into the membership of Lake and Bethel? If so, give me a really loud, we do. We do. Thank you. Wow. See, I'm, I'm getting a little... <laughs> it's Annie Christine. Annie Christine. Annie Christine, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, Melanie, look at and Nick, look at what it says on the screen. In the name of the, this is a huge privilege for me to say this. I'm not doing very well. <laughs> in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the only king and head of the church, this child is now received into the visible membership of the church and is engaged to confess the faith of Christ and to be his faithful servant until her life's end. And now I get to take her for a little walk. <laughs> wow, you are a tiny thing. <laughs> So, ladies and gentlemen, would you welcome, please, the newest member of Lake and Bethel, Annie Bishop. I got to show her to this side, too. That's okay. You can take her. <laughs> well, you, you know the advantage of being a grandfather is that as soon as there's a dirty diaper, I hand them back. <laughs> but here she is, folks. Isn't she cute? So, how old is she now? Three and a half months. Three and a half months, wow. She'll be asking for a car soon. <laughs> now, if I may do this, I'd like to do the prayer holding her. Yeah. So if you guys want to just sit there, or however you want to do that. And if she starts screaming, just come and get her. You would think I wouldn't have this lump in my throat. All right, let's pray together, shall we?
Our Father in heaven, it is such a strong privilege that you've given us. And what I'm holding in my arms here today is proof that you want this world to go on and that you want us to be a part of that. So we give you thanks and ask that you, you bless little Annie Christine and show her your peace. We ask that as she lives out her life, she hears your voice and that she's aware of your presence in all things. So bless her and bless her parents, her family in many ways. We're thankful for this. And now we ask for your blessings for everyone here. Amen. So she's protesting. You ready to come back? You know, I think you should borrow this microphone so that you can hear her. Hear her talk the whole time? Yeah. She talks the whole time you're uh, preaching. Yeah. Well, she loves it. That's good. Well, congratulations, Thank guys. Thank you. Today we are talking about how to make 2024 a better new year and a special welcome to our video audience. It's always good to have you with us. Um, my name is Sherwin, I'm the pastor here and if you wish to support Lake and Bethel financially just go to our website lakeandbethel.org and you'll find out all kinds of information about us. So how can we work to improve our lives in 2024? Unless no one here wants to improve their life in 2024. Now, maybe your life is so good you don't need to improve it in 2024. That can happen. But most of us want to make some improvements. S some of us want to lose weight. And that's very difficult. And others, well, maybe your life would improve if you could find a better job. Maybe you don't like what you're doing for work. Maybe 2024 you want to work on fixing your marriage. Or if you're a parent of adult children, maybe in 2024 you'd like to find a way to fix your kids, which doesn't work. Or you could try other things. You know, maybe you could make little changes that make a big difference, no matter what age. But we all have changes that we need to make. Henry Cloud is one of my favorite shrinks in the world. He talks about the difference based on the book of Proverbs of the difference between a wise person and a foolish person. And he, he says the foolish person is the one who refuses to change. That if the environment changes around them, they don't adapt to it. The wise person takes the input and makes changes in themselves. And I like to illustrate this with dogs. Because, uh, you know, I have two sons and one of them, his girlfriend, has a border collie. And my other son has, the one that sells Harleys, is the one that has two Rottweilers. Now those Rottweilers are about 70 pounds each, but they still think they're lap dogs. They're about seven, eight months old. And if I sit down, they're on top of me and competing for my attention. So, you know, you don't have to be afraid of them. I walk into my son's house and the hair's up on their backs and as soon as they see it's me, they're wagging every part of their bodies and they're happy to see me. The Border Collie has an attitude. Now he doesn't like to be petted. The, he'll come to you and if you pet him, he smiles at you, you know, he shows you his teeth. But when you stop petting, he bites your hand because he wants more. And the other interesting thing, well that dog does lots of interesting things, the only time he really wants me is if I go to the refrigerator and open the door. Then he's standing there and he's giving me his full attention. But he throws up if he gets people food. Sometimes I sneak it to him anyway. The thing is that I have to change who I am, how I interact with dogs, based on those two dogs. If I'm going to be a wise dog handler, I have to respond to the Border Collie differently than I respond to the Rottweiler. And that's just how it is with our environment, with everything. Now, I believe that no matter what age we are, self-improvement pleases God. He wants us to improve on ourselves. 
And I believe there's lots of good stuff out there, both secular and religious, that can help us make those improvements. I used to read self-help books all the time, and I just started getting back into that again. It's really kind of a good thing to do. The question I have for you today is, well, what would you change if you could? If you could change anything in your life, what would it be? What, and what are some realistic ways to make your life better? Would you take those realistic ways? Would you take those little steps to improve your life? Is that a possibility? Would you take little steps to improve your relationship with God? Would you be willing to, to make 2024 a year of personal improvement? Would you be willing to make 2024 a year of spiritual improvement? You know, like I said, it starts in 12 and a half hours. So by the time you get out of here, it'll be 11 hours. That was a joke. Come on. All right. Now, the thing is, today we want to look at Paul's advice. His letter to the Romans. And what I've taken from that is four ways to improve your life in 2024. And the first one is try to get out of debt. Paul says this, don't run up debts except for the huge debt of love you owe each other. Sounds a little bit like Dave Ramsey here. But we can all agree that debt is not a good thing except for real estate. And he says getting us out of debt is always a good thing. Well, personal debt is usually caused by coveting something. By wanting something you can't afford so you borrow it, money for it and all that. I don't want to get into that long but I did check this week. And I found an article uh, by some credit people. It was either in Newsweek or Forbes. I forgot to write it down. But it said that the average credit card in 2022 in America, the average personal credit card debt was $7,951. That's the average. So you know a bunch of it's higher than that. And the average consumer debt per capita is 95067 so that means the average couple owes about $190,000. That's the average. Well, Paul says don't run up debts because when you do, you become a slave to whoever you borrow the money from. He said the only debt you should have, make it your goal, and you're not evil if you have debt, but you, know, you should try to get rid of it if you can't. The only goal you should have is the huge debt of love you owe each other because of what God has done for you. So that's the first resolution. Or first thing that I think we should try to do is get out of debt. Second one is to get busy loving those around you. When you love others, Paul teaches, you complete what the law has been after all along. Just think of the Old Testament, the Ten Commandments, as a preview of what Jesus teaches. And you'll notice in the next paragraph that Paul goes through and unpacks some of the Ten Commandments. He says this, The law code, don't sleep with another person's spouse, don't take someone's life, don't take what isn't yours, don't always be wanting what you don't have, and any other don't you can think of finally adds up to this. Love other people as well as you do yourself. You can't go wrong when you love others. When you add up everything in the law code, the sum total is love. Uh, isn't that interesting? You see how he goes through the Ten Commandments. I had to memorize them as a kid, and so I still got them kind of rattling around in my head in the old King James Version. But, you know, it's pretty much all included in there. Thou shalt not commit adultery. It's in there. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not covet. He says they're all, you automatically follow all of these if you practice the law of love. If you love other people, all these just happen. If you love other people as well as yourself, you're not going to sleep with their spouse. If you love others as well as yourself, you're not going to kill them. If you love others, you won't steal their stuff. If you love others, you won't even want to take their stuff. You won't covet what isn't yours. It's really very simple. Very radical, but very simple. So that's the second one. 
get busy loving those around you. Third one is be aware of what God is doing. Uh, Paul words this in his own unique way. He says, but make sure that you don't get so absorbed and exhausted in taking care of all your day-to-day -day obligations that you lose track of the time and doze off. Oblivious to God. The night's over. The dawn's about to break. Be up and awake to what God is doing. God is putting the finishing touches on the salvation work he began when we first believed. Now, I get distracted. And sometimes I don't see what God is doing. Sometimes I get so busy being a pastor, I just don't have time for God. I become oblivious to what he's doing. He's trying to put the finishing touches on me, and I don't notice it. He's trying to heal my soul, and I don't notice it. Sometimes what I think is important is really a tremendous waste of time. So I have to practice this thing of being aware of what God is doing. And Paul continues with this. He says, we can't afford to waste a minute must not squander these precious daylight hours in frivolity and indulgence, in sleeping around and dissipation, in bickering and grabbing everything in sight. So what he's saying is don't waste your time pursuing the same things the world wants you to pursue. You've got way too much to do to get involved in this stuff. Yeah, you know, we think about 2023, how much time did we spend bickering about politics? You know, or things like that. And he says, this stuff doesn't matter. There's a, a Greek word for it. Uh, the word is adiaphora. And it means things that are unimportant. Don't focus on that stuff. So that's the third one. Be aware of what God is doing. Here comes number four. Get dressed in the attitude of Christ. He says, get out of bed and get dressed. Don't loiter and linger, waiting until the very mess, last minute. Dress yourselves in Christ and be up and about. So put on this attitude of Christ. You can do it. It's like changing your coat. My offset home, I have thermometer that reads the outside temperature. If it's below 40, I wear one coat. If it's above 40, I wear another one. If it's below 40, I put on this Carhartt uh, coat that probably weighs as much as my car does, but it's very effective in keeping me warm, and the rest of the time I wear a much lighter one. The point is I have a choice <coughs> as to what coat I'm going to put on. <coughs> it's one of the choices we all have all the time, just like our attitudes. We can put on whatever attitude we want anytime. So what Paul is reminding us to do here, when he says dress yourself in Christ, that's a metaphor he uses in many of his other writings too. He's saying choose the attitude of Christ, it'll get you through the day a lot better. Get dressed in it, just as you pick out your clothes every day. I chose this black shirt today. You know why? Oh, I spent hours and hours on my wardrobe, as you can tell. No. I picked it because it was clean. Just grabbed it out of the closet, put it on. You know, that's pretty much how I do things. But we all have reasons for choosing our attitudes. And we might as well choose one that's going to be a blessing. So a summary of the four things right here. First one is get out of debt if you can. Second, get busy loving those around you. You can do that. Third one, be aware of what God is doing. And the fourth one is dress yourself in the attitude of Christ. Now, you're not going to be able to pull this off all at once. But we can move like 1% a day. That absolutely does work. And one of the things that the school of hard knocks has taught me of you know 40 plus years of being a pastor is that God won't ask you to do things that you can't do but you can do this so I recommend that we make these our resolutions for 2024 we'll have a better year and we'll have a better life 
So let me pray for you as you consider your resolutions. Let's pray together. Lord, you've called this group of folks here today for whatever reasons, reasons that we can't even comprehend. But my prayer is that for each person here, 2024 is the best year they ever have had. That things will just keep getting better. They'll enjoy it. They'll realize that 2024 is the year that you have made. Amen. All right, and to our video audience, thanks as always for tuning in. And we are going to move to our offering now. As always, thanks again for joining us. We have two services on Sunday morning. And if you're in town, we'd invite you to come once at 9 o'clock and once at 11 o'clock. And if you wish to support Lake and Bethel, you can go to lakesandbethel.org and follow the steps there on our website. Or you can just look at this QR code, scan it in with your phone, and you can give through Secure Give, and all your gifts will go directly into our account. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next week. Hey.